Unless you're a fan of Marvel or even mythology surrounding Norse gods, you'll probably be unfamiliar with Asgard. Though today I'm not talking about Thor or Odin, but instead we're shifting our focus to a brand of memory that are hoping to shake things up a bit by offering the highest speeds with quality ICs and the most aggressive pricing on the market. But can they compete with the big guns like Corsair, Crucial and Kingston? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's do this. Yep, face the camera, face the camera. Yep, that's that it. power supply, so dreamy. Oh my God, what's the Antec signature? With a fully modular design, 80 plus titanium efficiency rating and 10 year warranty, it will be the most famous power supply ever owned. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. With the launch of Z690 and B660, we also saw a pivotal new feature being added to the market alongside the latest 12th gen Alder Lake processors. And that of course is DDR5. When it launched back in November, it was expensive. It was limited and frankly, it was just very hard to even buy. But if we look back at DDR4 and even DDR3 launches, the same happened there too. And ourselves and many other media outlets repeated the fact that whenever a new memory standard arrives on the scene, it kind of takes time for, you know, the speeds to get faster, the timings to get tighter, and for it to kind of, I guess, mature overall. Now with DDR5 though, it's not just a matter of faster frequencies, potentially higher bandwidth throughput and larger capacities, but some other big changes have come along with it too, including the position of the voltage regulator, which is now on the dims themselves instead of the motherboard, like it was on older generations. Meaning that kind of technically DDR5 modules are, I guess, more energy efficient compared to DDR4. So you could argue that DDR5 is more complex than any generations before it. And that obviously adds into the cost, which is where Asgard are trying to mix things up a bit by keeping pricing as attractive as possible, or so we're told. So what we actually have here today is 32 gig ICA DDR5 uh, memory modules. Now for anyone, again, unfamiliar with Norse mythology, Aesir was a clan of gods, and that's pretty much gonna be the end of me giving you a lesson in mythology because I know absolutely nothing about it apart from Thor was in the Marvel films. So let's talk about the memory. I mean, considering never having a product from Asgard or really ever hearing of the company, it all feels kind of pretty premium in terms of the packaging with a solid box that includes some godlike artwork on the front and a small card showing the memory drawings and kind of a credit to the designer. The weirdest thing inside, and something we didn't even get with the shiny modules like the Trident Royals from G-Skill, is that they included a set of very small, and I mean very small gloves. I mean, it's obvious from these gloves and kind of the sheer size of them that maybe they aren't aimed at the Western market where people typically have larger hands. So packaging aside, the memory itself comes in two 16 gig modules clocked at 4,800 megahertz with 40, 40, 40, 77 timings. Design-wise, it actually looks all right. I mean, it's not too flashy, but it does have some gold accents on there, which I guess may put some people off, depending on the rest of your build and the theme you're trying to go for. The rest of the modules feature a smooth black surface along with a black PCB. It just, it looks kind of, yeah, premium. Shit, it's premium, dude! Premium! Now, one thing that you will notice is the modules feature a kind of asymmetric design and include sharp lines and angles to make room for a light bar that passes through the heat spreaders. On the top of the module is a small piece of ICA branding, again, featuring a small amount of gold, which, as I mentioned, some people might like, but some people just might not be able to ignore it. You could always modify it, I guess. On the side of the heat spreader is some more ICA branding, but instead is actually punched out into the heat spreader. And it does allow a small amount of RGB from the light bar to pass through it. And I mean a very, very small amount of light. It's kind of quite subtle overall, while the rest of the light bar has a kind of milky, almost frosted look to it, which definitely softens the light, making it kind of not too in your face. As you'd expect with any memory modules that do have RGB, it is compatible with all of the latest RGB control software from the likes of Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, and ASRock. Now, as lovely as those heat spreaders are when ripping them off, which, side note, was an absolute nightmare to do, as I think they may have actually used super glue to put them on there, it gives us kind of an idea to what we're dealing with. On one side, there's not much going on, other than kind of eight LEDs and one ENE embedded controller, whereas the other shows us the eight Micron branded two gig ICs. In the middle is the voltage regulator that I mentioned, which has now moved from the motherboard onto the modules themselves. 
So overall, I guess quite a simple design and again, something that may mature over time. Putting the heat spreaders back on and installing the kit into our test bench, we did find there to actually be no XMP profile and no JDEC SPD profile baked into the module themselves. And while this, I guess, may cause some issues for say novice users, our motherboard was actually able to pick up the timings automatically. Though we did have to change the TRAS cycle time from 76 to 77 as it was meant to be based on the product specs. Now, I mean, it's not a big deal for us and is likely how Asgard are as they say, able to keep the cost down, but could it alienate part of the market who maybe aren't comfortable changing settings themselves, especially when it comes to timings? Get that wrong and, well, you know, your PC's just not gonna boot. So at first glance, things are looking pretty decent, and in all honesty, it's nice to see kind of another player enter the mainstream market, as it will help drive down the cost of DDR5 in general, and the winner with all that is gonna be the consumer. So, no complaints from me. Though before I get ahead of myself, let's take a look at the performance at its rated 4800 MHz speed. For our test bench, we use the MSI MAG Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. We used an Intel 12900K and a Notua D15S cooler. All of the other components did stay the same, but aren't really relevant to memory testing. Firstly, jumping into ADA64, we can see that while the two Corsair kits did perform better in the retest, you have to bear in mind that both operate at a faster frequency straight out of the box and likely demand a higher price point. Right speed sadly saw the Asgard kit fall behind the generic SK Hynix kit that we have, but still offers up some blistering fast throughput and shouldn't be snuffed at. It's worth bearing in mind that the SK Hynix kit is also double the capacity. Copy speed was a very similar story, seeing the Asgard kit at the bottom of our comparisons by quite some margin. These slower speeds are likely due to the timings, and as mentioned, we'd likely see DDR5 speeds in terms of bandwidth increase as newer, faster, and tighter timing kits are released in the near future. When looking at the latency, again, we see both faster Corsair kits give better results as expected, and a similar result with the Asgard kit and the SK Hynix kit, being that both operate at 4800 MHz. Moving on to some other tests, and we again see the Asgard kit come out with a much longer calculation time when running SuperPi 32M, with the other kits all coming in with similar times. In W Prime, things improve for the Asgard kit, narrowly being beaten by the SK Hynix kit, and while the Corsair kits actually performed worse, it was only by a small margin when breaking each time down. Moving on to Cinebench, and the results really were a bit of a mixed bag. The kit I expected to perform top actually garnered the worst score, and the Asgard kit kind of sat comfortably in the middle. The SK Hynix kit being 64 gig is why we saw a better score come from that, so it's definitely worth keeping that in mind. In Blender, with the memory kits being so similar in frequency, there really isn't much to say, other than the fact that memory that has around the same speed doesn't really make much of a difference. Testing in Corona, the Asgard kit did fall behind the competition slightly, though not by much, and again, I fear kits with tighter timings will always come out on top, but you're probably gonna pay more for those types of kits. Moving on to Future Mark, and we see Asgard coming out on top. You could argue that across all the kits, there isn't much in it of around 20 to 40 points, but a win is a win nonetheless. Time Spy saw a similar story when the various kits traded places within our results, but again, all being within around 30 points of each other. You could argue Margin of Error could see these results move around if we carried on retesting. Moving on to gaming performance, and of course we see the lower frequency, lower capacity kits sitting at the bottom of the stack. Whether paying more for kind of higher capacity memory or faster memory for gaming to achieve a 2-3% increase in performance is worth it, really comes down to your personal preference. Me personally, definitely not. In Metro Exodus, we see results exactly like we expect, with the two faster Corsair kits giving us a small performance increase over the Asgard. But again, these kits are likely more expensive in the first place. So seeing a less than 2% lead really doesn't make sense if you're paying a lot more for the kit in the first place. Finally, in Dirt 5, it doesn't seem that capacity or frequency makes much of a difference when comparing the Asgard kit to the other memory that we tested against here today. So stock performance is okay. In comparison to the competition from both SK Hynix and Corsair, it did fall short, but we're also comparing, I guess, apples to oranges, as the two kits from Corsair are faster on paper, and the SK Hynix kit is actually double the capacity. And while we would have loved to have had, I guess, comparable kits, DDR5 is still hard to get hold of right now, even for us as kind of media and reviewers. Now, if you are wanting to get this kit and potentially see how far it can go, then you may be looking at overclocking it. And while there are many different ways to do this, including slacking in timings or increasing voltages, we put our focus on keeping both timings and voltages at their rated values and 
do things a little bit differently by simply increasing the frequency while maintaining stability. In the end, we were able to push it up to 5200 megahertz with full stability. While we did try pushing it a little bit further to 5333 megahertz, we did manage to actually boot into Windows, but it crashed during our ADA64 stability test. Now, along the way, we did actually see quite a large jump in the ADA64 read test with an 8% increase over the stock 4800 MHz speed. In the write test, while not as much of a jump, we do still see just under a 6% performance boost when comparing the default 4800 MHz clock speed and the 5200 MHz overclock speed. In the copy test, the difference grew again to just under 8%, further showing that as we get closer to 5200 MHz, it really allows the memory to stretch its legs just that little bit more. Lastly, when looking at the ADA64 latency test, we saw a small 3% decrease, but nothing that would be noticeable to the average user or average gamer. So what can we take from the results, stock or overclocked? I mean, the kit is good. It's definitely up there with the big players. It's just a shame that the kits we had to compare to were faster or larger in capacity, which in turn makes the Asgard look worse than what it actually is. From face value though, it's not bad. And I always welcome a new brand into the market, especially if they're trying to do something a bit different, like shaking up the market. And so much of that comes down to price. The problem with price, especially when you're, I guess, a new player entering the game is finding it available and kind of technically for a reasonable price, especially with the way that the market has been lately. Now, at the start of this video, I mentioned that they were trying to shake things up in terms of pricing and being affordable. And taking a look around, we did actually manage to find the kit available but only at two places. The first one at Jingdong or JD.com, which is a Chinese retailer for 2,299 yuan, which converted comes to about 272 pounds or $364, which comes in slightly cheaper than an equivalent 4,800 megahertz kit from Corsair. Though it does come in more than a faster 5,200 megahertz kit, which is part of the Vengeance lineup from Corsair. And as I've never heard of Jingdong, I'm not exactly sure how long shipping would be. Now, the only other place that we found it available was on AliExpress for £308.81p. So coming in quite a bit more expensive, which kind of makes it a tough one for me to really recommend if that is actually the case. And again, shipping times are showing well over 20 days. So depends on how quickly you want the memory. I'd like to think that as the brand finds a distributor and opens up in regional channels, we should actually see that price come down. But Kind of right now, it's really a tough one to recommend to you all. So you tell me, I mean, would you give the iSeer DDR5 kit a go at the prices I mentioned, or does it need to potentially come down just that little bit more to make it worth considering and make it competitive? I'd love to know your thoughts as to kind of what makes a bigger difference. Are we talking pricing or brand power? Let me know in the comments section below. For me, it's just, just a little bit too rich from a brand that isn't as well known as the competition. So I'd need to see it come in maybe a little bit cheaper, but very much like graphics cards, really it all comes down to what's available at the time. And this, frankly, right now, might be your only option. So wrapping it up there, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And if you love what we do, maybe consider supporting us on Patreon. The link is down below and frankly, it gives you a ton, and I mean a ton of benefits. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.